sex talk Derek and Miley Cause sexuality is tough And okay sex just isn't good enough No Sex talk With Derek and Miley Hey folks Welcome to Sex Talk with Erica Miley. Erica Miley here. Episode 50. 50. Holy crap. Holy crap, you guys. Like, I can't even. It's a year of episodes. It's crazy. It's crazy. (laughs) I just kind of want to, before we jump into today's topic, which today's topic is when might be a good time to start having sex when you first get to know somebody. We'll get there, I promise. I want to just kind of give you all a shout out because the way that this show has grown is just amazing and wonderful to me. And I just feel so grateful that you all keep showing up, (laughs) that you all keep leaving reviews and that you all keep finding the show and sharing it with other people. And I, the more that we can do this together, the more that we can create a community, the better and the less shame about sex there will be. So thank you to all of you. I wouldn't have this if it wasn't for you. So how have we grown? This is a big deal. First, the podcast is global. So for those of you out there in YouTube land, I'm going to be kind of giving some statistics of what the podcast itself is doing. And it's global, folks. Like, it's a big deal. (laughs) I'm so excited. So I want to give a shout out to Australia, Canada, the UK for being the largest listener bases outside of the US. Like, I'm just tickled, especially since you Oz folks, I have a crush on your country. I really want to come visit. (laughs) It's one of those countries I've had a crush on for a very long time, and it's at the top of my bucket list to come see. So when I do come to visit, we will do like a meet and greet or something because you Oz folks are out here listening and doing your best. I'm just so just so stoked that um, I was just looking at the numbers and I'm like, yeah, Australia. Whoop, whoop. So how about the U.S.? The U.S., you're killing it. <laughs> They're, most of my listeners are from the U.S. And I want to give shout outs to specific states. Washington, Colorado, California, Texas, New York, Florida, and North Carolina. The largest listener bases so far. We got a couple states we've got to get to. I'm just going to say some of my Washington or Idaho folks just step on over to Montana and download an episode. <laughs> we need to get those folks in here. Let's get everybody wrapped in. I also want to kind of talk about some of the most popular things that have been on, like, as far as the numbers go, as far as what I see from statistics on, on my show. The most popular episode by far, far and away, even though I've been doing this for 50 episodes, is the butt stuff episode. (laughs) Y'all love the butt, or at least you love finding out more about the butt. (laughs) I mean, here's the thing. The butt has so many adventures you could have with it and so much pleasure can be had. And I cannot blame you all for being extremely curious about what the butt can do for you. So most popular episode by far. I keep switching back and forth screens here just so that I can make sure that I touch all of these wonderful little facts about 50 episodes in, which you all just, yeah, I'm going to keep saying thank you a hundred million times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the stuff to remember so that we can keep growing. So we're not stopping at 50 no way, no way, not at all, is that there's a Patreon. I have a Patreon, folks. Jump on there, search Erica Miley. You will find me, and we're doing some cool stuff. We're going to be doing more cool stuff in the coming year with Patreon, so please jump on there. There's lots of wonderful content creators on there, and this is how we pay the bills, y'all. I have a wonderful podcast editor who I who I pay. His name's Tom. He's great. He has his own podcasts, which you should check out, Reminiscent. And I think he just came out with a podcast about podcasts. Very meta of you, Tom. So 
But that's how we pay the bills. Like (laughs) all of us out here, content creators, we rely on our listeners to just kick in a couple bucks here and there to help us pay for good sounding quality stuff for you. So check it out. Also, rate and review, especially if you use iTunes, the podcast app, jump on there, five stars. That helps this podcast get found. It is not easy to get the algorithms to do what you need them to do. And one of the things that we can do to do that is five-star reviews. So jump on there. So I wanted to review a few of my favorite reviews. (laughs) Not like rate them for rating me. No, no. Um, I wanted to just read a few of the reviews because I know I have not done that yet. And I really think it's important. I wanted to just kind of highlight some of our listeners out there who have kind of lifted this show up and have just made this all possible. So the green therapist said a must listen to. I appreciate that very much. Eric is bubbly, personable, and easy to listen to, full of knowledge. And I'm currently a graduate student for therapy and I gain new information to take to session with me after listening to these amazing podcasts. I am so glad to hear you're out here, new therapist, trying to get all of the information that you need out here. We need more really, really sex-educated therapists out here. So awesome. Thank you for giving a review. I so appreciate it. Great informative podcast from Nasmo. So I actually know who this reviewer is. This is Dr. Nazanin Moali, who those of you know that I have been on her past podcast and she has been on mine. She has her own podcast called Sexology with Dr. Nazanin Moali, and she is amazing and wonderful and full of such wonderful information. So if I had to say I had a sister podcast, that would be the one. (laughs) She says, finally, a podcast that talks about sex education in a playful but accurate way. It's clear that the host is very passionate and, and knowledgeable in this area, and I'm looking forward to future episodes. And as you know, I'm a fan of yours. From Ab Testa, raw, real, and funny. Love how Erica goes there and isn't afraid to talk about any subject. She's a great interviewer and so enjoy her episodes. Yes, to open up these important conversations. Oh my goodness, we need all of it. All of it. Let's open up every other conversation we can. We need good sex ed out here <laughs> in the world so that people can have wonderful relationships. So I really appreciate the review. Shane Burkle said, says, great podcast, great host. The topic is, needs to be talked about more, and Erica's just the person to do that. Oh, thank you, Shane. I appreciate that. Abundant Allison, raw, real sex talk by an expert. I love these frank, unapologetic, unashamed conversations about sex. We need more Erica's in the world, sometimes funny, always thoughtful. This podcast is great for those wanting to understand their relationship with sex better and some tips along the way. So there's quite a few here. I'm going to read more in the coming episodes just because I want to highlight you all. I want to build this community and have you all come and just be part of the Patreon so that we can all be talking and having these conversations together. And the conversation doesn't just end with the podcast or YouTube videos. Oh, before I forget, if you do have questions or want to jump on and you don't know how to access the podcast or whatever the case, Erica at EricaMiley.com and also ericamiley.com. Quick break from the action, folks. <laughs> action. <laughs> I just want to tell you about my Patreon. Every week, I bring you guests and, seriously, lots of sex nerdery. <laughs> Help me keep doing that by becoming a supporter. What do you get in return? Cool perks. For real. I am going to be doing shout-outs, stickers, a bunch of stuff. So check it out at ericamiley.com forward slash Patreon. That's E-R-I-K-A-M-I-L-E-Y dot com forward slash Patreon. I hope to see you and see more of you by becoming a Patreon. Thanks, guys. So back to the topic. When is the right time to start having sex? You know, I get this question a lot, not just from clients, not just from friends, but I mean, I get this question a lot, especially from my my folks in the world who are out here online dating. 
you all are brave souls. You are brave humans. <laughs> and I applaud you. And you probably, YouTubers, are seeing the door open behind me. It is the cat because he's sneaky. So anyway, <laughs> the dating world on the internet is kind of like the Wild West. There's a lot happening and I know many of you are getting unsolicited dick pics. I sure as shit get a lot in my DMs on my therapy Instagram. So I know all of you who are out here on the apps are getting lots of unsolicited dick pics. <laughs> no matter how you identify, you're getting lots of unsolicited dick pics. So I just want to kind of shout out your bravery for being willing to come out here and be in the dating world and be online and, and try to find that partner that you really want to be with. So when to have sex. So we do actually have some numbers on this, and I actually want to reference Dr. Justin Lee Miller's blog, which if those of you haven't visited his blog, he's got some great information on there. He talks about the numbers of what we know about sexuality research and how that relates to relationships. So I will drop his blog in the show notes so that if you are all interested, you can find it. But one of the things he talked about in his blog was that there was a non-scientific survey that was done by OkCupid. Because guess what, folks? All of the dating apps keep all of the dating statistics on you. And um, if you think your data is safe, don't kid yourself. <laughs> so people are kind of all over the place when it comes to their beliefs about when they should have that first sexual encounter. So 28% said between one and two dates. So essentially 28% of the people who were surveyed, which in this survey, something to know about surveys generally, there is of course some bias. You're going to have bias. One part of the bias is going to be those who are even willing to fill out the survey at all. The other part of the bias is the people who are willing to do online dating. That doesn't cover all of people, right? That means that this data is not generalizable to the entire population, essentially. I mean, it kind of sounds like common sense, but it's something to know about this data as I talk about it. So 28% of those who filled out this survey for OkCupid said they would have sex within those one to two dates. So I think that's probably common, and it probably is common depending on which app you're using. Like maybe you might make different choices or you might respond to that question differently if you are on Bumble versus Tinder. So Again, data is, is skewed by the population that's selected. So keep that in mind. Not to say that people wouldn't generally believe that, but it is a good thing to keep in mind. 47% of this survey said between three and five dates. 20% said six or more dates. 5% said only after getting married. So I think that's an interesting kind of smattering of data. <laughs> it's kind of all over all over the spectrum there. So 28% one to two eight dates, 47%. So a big chunk of that data said between three and five dates. 20% said six or more dates, 5% said after getting married. So if you think about like how that might look on a on a graph, it would be it would look like a bell curve kind of maybe a little bit like a penis. <laughs> now, keep in mind, this is not taking any kind of like religious beliefs in, into account or any of those kinds of things. This is just based on this very specific question. When should or when do people feel comfortable having sex after they have met somebody or after they've had a first date? So the pattern tells us that it seems that we don't have a universal rule. A majority of us, yes, that big chunk of data says three to five dates. So, I mean, 
I know many people out here have heard the three date rule, like you must have been on three dates before you have sex. But really, that's an arbitrary saying. (laughs) Ultimately, what this comes down to is your personal comfort level. What are you comfortable with doing? And what does it mean to you to be physically close to someone Is it okay to have sex without emotional ties? Is it okay to have sex with emotional ties? Everyone is different in how they feel about this. So ultimately, it comes down to what are you individually comfortable with? And then what is the person that you would like to have sex with, what are they comfortable with? Of course, you need consent, folks. <laughs> so you need to consider what your personal values are. And that could be religious. It could be not religious. It could be just wanting to be sure that you can trust that this person will be safe with you, that they will be safe with your body. So it does seem that timing of sex doesn't really matter at least as far as how we feel about it as people. And in Dr. Justin Lee Miller's blog, he says that the feelings on sex and love are linked to do you see them going together or do you see sex without love being okay? Kind of like what we were talking about. But one of the things that he says here that I think is really, really interesting is that He did take a look at some of the research um, that what does it mean in regards to relationship satisfaction? And I think this is important. So he looked at the existing research on the timing of sex and how it's linked to relationship satisfaction. And in the results, at least so far, suggest that there really is not a meaningful difference in happiness based on when couples start doing it. So there is not a meaningful difference between those who waited between the three to five dates. I mean, that is where a lot of that data is, is the bet three to five date range between those folks and relationship satisfaction of those who maybe wait until they get married. So it, at least so far from what science shows us, doesn't seem to matter. Now, it just because the research is showing that it doesn't seem to matter doesn't mean that it can't matter to you. Again, this comes down to personal preference. This is such an important thing for you to get your mind wrapped around. I don't want you going out there and just being like, hey, I think I should have sex in three dates because this is what I've heard. And that is what, you know, everyone tells me to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Really, it is not up to anyone else but you and your values and the values of your partner that you would like to have sex with. So Having that open conversation from the very beginning is very, very important so that you understand each other's expectations. This is one of those things that we think as people like, oh, I'm just going to dance around this conversation. I'm going to just kind of hint at things. In reality, when it comes to sex and when we want to have it, it should be a much more concrete, very straightforward conversation. And if it is, it leaves the mystery out of it. And so that neither one of you have to guess and check. And that's really, really important, especially when it comes to consent, helping you understand where you are on your values when it comes to when you want to have sex and when, where your partner is on this question does have a lot to do with consent. So all of the things <laughs> kind of covered the entire gamut of things. I want to remind you of the Patreon again check out the Patreon. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And I'm going to be adding more material there. I'm also going to be adding more material to my YouTube channel. I am currently recording on YouTube right this minute. So I would love to have you join me in any way that is easiest for you, whether it's through podcasts or YouTube or however, however. (laughs) So 
Check out my website, ericamiley.com. You can find me on Instagram, Erica Miley Therapy. And guess what, folks? I'm going to be adding therapists to my practice. So I'm going to be able to help even more people. I'm so excited about this. I'm going to be having therapists who, you know, who are going to join me, who are going to be sex positive, who are going to be sex educated, because I think that's really important. No matter what your specialty is as a therapist, sex is something we all do. So I want to help as many people as I can and spread the love to the therapists out there who really, really want to have that open door policy for all things that all, all of our clients are going to come talk to us about. So thanks for sticking with me for 50 episodes. Here's to the next 50. I will see you all next time. Thanks for listening, folks. Please rate and review on iTunes. That helps this podcast get found. If you leave a five-star review, let me know about it on any social media, and I'll shout you out on the podcast. You can find my website at ericamiley.com. You can find me on Facebook, the Gram, and Twitter. See you all next time.